Hello dear students. In the previous episode of the chapter on applications of biotechnology, we have studied in detail applications of biotechnology in agriculture with special reference to contribution of biotechnology to sustainable agriculture which includes developing biofertilizers, biopesticides and disease and insect resistant varieties. In the second part of this chapter, we will focus on biotechnological applications in medicine. Dear students, you must know that today the recombinant DNA technological processes have made immense impact in the area of healthcare by enabling mass production of safe and more effective therapeutic drugs. One of the advantage of recombinant therapeutics is that they do not induce unwanted immunological responses which is common in case of similar products isolated from non-human sources. At present, about 30 recombinant therapeutics have been approved for human use throughout the world. In India, about 12 of these are presently being marketed. The development of genetically engineered insulin is a major achievement of this field. As we know that management of diabetes is possible by taking insulin at regular time intervals. Millions of people worldwide suffer from diabetes. Diabetes occur when the pancreas doesn't produce enough of the hormone insulin. Insulin is necessary for using the energy we get from food. Most of our food is changed into glucose sugar. The insulin helps the glucose to get into the cells of our bodies for use in the form of energy. Because diabetics don't have enough insulin, the glucose builds up in their bloodstream, which can lead to serious health complications like heart disease, blindness and kidney failure. The diabetes patients have to take daily doses of insulin to manage their glucose levels. The insulin can come from several sources including the pancreas of pig or cow. Because pig insulin is nearly identical to human insulin, pigs are the most common source. But some diabetes patients react badly to pig insulin. It is also difficult to get the large quantity of insulin when pigs are relied on as the main source. Pharmaceutical companies now use genetic engineering to produce large quantities of insulin. The common Escherichia coli bacteria is used to produce insulin. Using recombinant DNA technology, the gene for producing insulin is inserted into the Escherichia coli's genetic material. These genetically engineered bacteria are turned into tiny insulin producing factories. The resulting insulin is so close to human insulin that it is virtually impossible to distinguish one from the other. Students, you must know that insulin consists of two short polypeptide chains, chain A and chain B, that are linked together by disulfide bridges. You may observe these in this diagram. In mammals, including human beings, Insulin is synthesized as a pro-hormone which contains an extra stretch called the C-peptide. Students, you should know that like a pro-enzyme, the pro-hormone also needs to be processed before it becomes a fully mature and functional hormone. This C-peptide is not present in the mature insulin and is removed during maturation into insulin. The main challenge for production of insulin using recombinant DNA techniques was getting insulin assembled into a mature form. In 1983, an American company, Ellie Lilly, prepared two DNA sequences corresponding to A and B chains of human insulin and introduced them in plasmids of Escherichia coli to produce insulin chains. Chains A and B were produced separately, extracted and combined by creating disulfide bonds to form human insulin. Dear students, now let us look into the process of gene therapy, which is again a major achievement of recombinant DNA technology. Gene therapy is a collection of methods that allow correction of a gene defect that has been diagnosed in a child or even in the embryo. Here, 
genes are inserted into a person's cells and tissues to treat a disease. Correction of a genetic defect involves delivery of a normal gene into the individual or embryo to take over the function of the normal cell and compensate for the non-functional gene. The first clinical gene therapy was given in 1990 to a four-year-old girl. She was suffering with adenosine deaminase or ADA deficiency. This is an enzyme which is crucial for the immune system to function. This disorder is caused due to the deletion of the gene for adenosine deaminase. In some children, ADA deficiency can be cured by bone marrow transplantation. In others, it can be treated by enzyme replacement therapy, in which functional ADA is given to the patient by injection. But the problem with both of these approaches is that they are not completely curative. As a first step towards gene therapy, lymphocytes from the blood of the patient are grown in a culture outside the body. A functional adenosine deaminase complementary DNA using a retroviral vector is introduced into these lymphocytes, which are subsequently returned to patient. However, as these cells are not immortal, the patient requires periodic infusion of such genetically engineered lymphocytes. However, in the gene isolate from marrow cells producing adenosine deaminase is introduced into cells at early embryonic stages, a permanent cure can be achieved. Dear students, now let us see another marvel of recombinant DNA technology, which is molecular diagnosis. As we know that for effective treatment of a disease, early diagnosis and understanding the disease's pathophysiology is very important. Using conventional methods of diagnosis of serum and urine analysis etc. for early detection is not possible. Recombinant DNA technology, polymerase chain reaction or PCR and enzyme linked immunosorbent assay or ELISA are some of the techniques that serve the purpose of early diagnosis. Here I must tell you ELISA is based on the principle of antigen antibody interaction. Here infection by pathogen can be detected by the presence of antigens like proteins, glycoproteins etc. or by detecting the antibodies synthesized against the pathogen. Dear students, the presence of a pathogen like bacteria, viruses etc. is normally suspected only when the pathogen has produced a disease symptom. But by this time, the concentration of pathogen is already very high in the body. However, very low concentration of a bacteria or virus at a time when the symptoms of the disease are not yet visible can be detected by amplification of their nucleic acid by PCR. PCR is now routinely used to detect HIV in suspected AIDS patients. It is being used to detect mutations in genes in suspected cancer patients too. It is a powerful technique to identify many other genetic disorders. So students, let us conclude the topics studied today. We have discussed the applications of modern biotechnology or recombinant DNA technology in the area of medicine, which include production of genetically engineered insulin, gene therapy, and various methods of molecular diagnosis. In the next episode of this chapter, we will look into the topics on transgenic animals and plants, including their significance to the society. We will also discuss some of the ethical issues in biotechnology. Till then, goodbye.